life's not just dreaming it, we're doing it for real Straight, straight, straight to the top Working hard every day just to live a better world Welcome back to another special Sunday edition of Monty and the Pharaoh, only seen here live from Rockstar Studios here in Huntington, New York. Village Connection Radio at the board, as usual, Mr. Jim Savali. What's up, what's up? And to the right, with a man that needs no introduction, ECW legend, Bill Alfonso. Oh, thanks, Daddy. I'm a legend in my own mind, but I like that. You oh, are a legend, my friend. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure to be hooked up with you guys. Uh, you guys are treating me like a superstar. You guys are cool. I'm having a better time here than I was on a big uh, uh, market. It was Mankow in Chicago, Daddy. Nice. Wow. Nice. Thank you, you so much. Really cool. Oh, my God. I love getting put over, man. Nice. It it's, feels good, it's, a it? it's such a great feeling, yeah. you know? I got Steven Seagal sitting over there, Jim, the producer. I got Monty, the man. Uh, everything's Gucci. Oh, unbelievable. So, our new introduction song, Aqua Cherry, straight oh, to the top. Do you like that song? Of course I do. You can catch their music on Spotify, iTunes, or where music is sold. And with all those Bill Alfonso fans out there, please support local Long Island music, right? Nice. Exactly. You know, it's tough to become a pro professional wrestler nowadays, and it's tough to become a musician and make a little bit of money, right? It's you got to hustle. Yeah, there's thousands of uh, sports entertainers out there, and there's only 150 jobs, so it's really hard. <sighs> wow, that's a tough biz. Speaking of that, why get into it then? What brought? What made you do it? Well, I grew up in Tampa Bay. Hey, first let me give a shout out to my beautiful grandson and my beautiful niece who are watching the show. Nice. I want to congratulate my grandson, John Avery, uh, for winning the soccer game. I'm sorry I missed it. And I'm going to catch the next one next week because I'm off. All right. Yeah. John Avery and Angelica Mary, beautiful. They yeah. love wrestling. And they watch the show, too, with me because right. I watch it. I never miss it. I haven't slept since 1982. So that means I'm up all the time. So I never missed your broadcast. It's the number one pro wrestling broadcast in Long Island. Why wouldn't I watch it? You have more superstars in here than anybody, any other show I've seen. It's really cool to be here, Eddie. Well, I that, really I'm, appreciate it. It's really cool to have you here, man. I got to tell you... Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just jacked up, man. I'm oh, really excited too. to have you. Really excited. I was a to have little. You. I had like a, a two percent anxiety when I came in. I said, well, you know, you get butterflies. I don't care if you go to the Madison Square Gardens mm -hmm. or to a show. Last night was a little indie show. Uh, it's the same. If you lose the butterflies, you lose it. Yeah. Well, I want to give a shout out to Rosa, who was on before you. Oh, she's beautiful. What an incredible. Not just beautiful, what an incredible person. I mean, personality is oh, great. Unbelievable. I'd say she's one of the most the top ten. In the top ten most beautiful forty year olds, old girls yes, on the planet. Yes. To me. Yes. You know, everybody yeah. has a taste, but she's my taste. And so. I'll even go a little further. Beautiful inside and out. Exactly. Yeah. I met her for the first time last night. We had a lot in common because we came from the uh, pro wrestling industry. So we clicked. First time I met her was last night over dinner. We talked. We couldn't stop talking. It was great. She's really cool. She's yeah. down to earth. Well, I got I got to thank her, and I got to thank you again for coming in. So again, okay. why pro wrestling, my friend? I don't know how. I, I just I'm blessed. I was lucky. Right time in the right place. I grew up in Tampa Bay. One of the hotbeds of pro wrestling. A lot of guys live there. And um, I grew up watching it. And I wanted to be a professional wrestler. My, my first night at the Fort Homer Hesley Armory. I was about 12 years old. My dad got me tickets from a friend of his. And I went and there was Eddie Graham, Great Malenko, Bobo Brazil, Jack Briscoe, uh, Sailor R. Thomas. All these big stars. Uh, and I wanted, I said, damn. They blew me away. I wanted to be just like them. But I grew up to be 155 pounds, a few pounds more now. But um, So couldn't get into wrestling at all. It was too small. But I loved the business. And I started meeting some of the guys. I met King Curtis, uh, uh, Rocky Johnson, the Rock's dad, and uh, became friends and started going, going to get them, making, uh, running errands for them and became friends and stuff. And they said, hey, Fonzie, you're a small guy, you'd make a perfect referee. Mm. And somehow I just lucked into it and Rocky Johnson and King Curtis sent me out to uh, Dallas, Texas. 
uh, and I worked with uh, the Von Erics uh, as a referee. They loved me. The, the Funks, there was four territories in Texas. The Amarillo was the Funks territory. Right. Um, uh, Dallas was the Von Erics. Joe Blanchard was San Antonio and Paul Bosch was Houston, so there was four different places to work. It was uh, unbelievable, so I worked for them all, but not full time. I was out there six months and worked maybe eight times, and it wasn't good for me, but, uh, so I was going back to Florida, and Paul Jones, he was a big time wrestler back in the 80s. Who we, we lost recently. Yes, God bless him. I didn't think you guys would recognize that name. Oh, God. I didn't know how big this is. Were. This is as old school as you can get. Really, really? Absol- absolutely, and we're new school. But uh, as I was telling Rosa, I grew up, you know, uh, Backlund, you know, San, Mar- San Martino at the end. Yeah, Backlund, you know. I was on the tail grand. end. I broke the business on the tail end of all those the, the mm-hmm. San Martinos and Bobo Brazil, right. the Sheik, San Buzanco. I didn't tell end of the career, so I worked with those guys. It was real cool. Right. So um, I was leaving from Texas because I couldn't get a full-time gig, making no money, struggling. Gatorade uh, Zero would be a great sponsor This episode is sponsored by Gatorade Zero. Beautiful, Daddy. I love him. His mic's good, Jim? He's good? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so Paul Jones said, hey, you going back to Florida? It's a shame you couldn't get a gig here because I had to do a referee's day, but man, named Bronco Lubitsch and so on. Yeah. Uh, full time, so he said, "Hey, when you get to Florida, go to the wrestling office, and Dusty Rhodes is the booker, and Jerry Briscoe is the assistant booker. Tell him I sent you. Tell me the referee and what you've done." And so I did that. So I went to the wrestling office when I got home. Said Jerry Briscoe, uh, I made an appointment with Jerry, Florida Championship Wrestling with Gordon Soley, and Jerry said, "Oh, you got a nice pedigree. You worked for all these guys, but unfortunately, again." There's no room. They had their full-time referees. He said, "But leave your name and number with the uh, the uh, downstairs, and if something comes up this summer, we'll give you a call. Or if we run a double shot, we can. If we can use you, we'll use you." So fortunately for me, this was a Monday, and we ran West. They ran West Palm every Monday, 50 weeks a year. Tampa Tuesday, Miami or Fort Lauderdale on Wednesday, Jacksonville Thursday, Friday and Saturday would be a spot show, could be anywhere in Florida, and Sunday Orlando, it's the repeat, repeat. So one of the secondary referees had the three main events in his car, and they're going to a sold out West Palm Beach uh, arena on Monday night, and Dusty was the boss, so the guy has, the referee has a flat tire with the three main event guys in a car, sold out building. And he didn't have a spare. Mm. So they missed the show. Dusty was livid. He fired him on the spot. And they called me Tuesday morning. Hey, uh, Bill Alfonso, uh, Charlie Lay, this old time wrestler guy, he's in the office, you know. Uh, he said, hey, Dusty wants to know if he can make it uh, tonight. And uh, I said, yes, sir. What time are you at? 7 o'clock. So I went at 7 o'clock. I worked. And at the end of the night, I did real good. And at the end of the night, Dusty said, hey, can you make uh, tomorrow? And can you make? So at the end of the week, by Sunday, they offered me a full-time job. And since May of 1980, I've been working full-time for the next 20 years. And now i part-time and doing the conventions and such. So I had a 20-year gig, worked for every major wrestling but company you, like, on the planet. I'm so sh- fortunate, Daddy. Weren't you shitting a brick, though, right? Because it seems like Dusty, you fuck up once, done. So now he's like, hey, man, you're the man now. Now, did you make sure you were at every event? You know, three hours Are early. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was never late. That was a great learning ground there in Florida. Um, I worked with all the greats. You can, I can name hundreds of them. And, uh, well, yeah. I'm going to hit you with a few. Barry Windham. Wonder Boy. Big star. Jake the Snake Roberts. He was in Florida. Him and, actually, him and Barry Windham had some classic. They had such good matches like Steamboat and Flair. They were on fire in Florida. Florida was selling out every night in every major arena, like from Monday, Palm, um, Tampa, Miami, on a consistent basis for like 
69 weeks in a row or something. Then it gets, you know, 90% full. It was unbelievable. And Barry Windham and Jake the Snake, I was there. Angela Mosca. And Barry, Barry was in studio. We were talking about marking out earlier. I, I marked out for Barry. That was, a, that was a huge deal. I would blow your mind. Purple Haze. Purple Haze. Mark Lewin. Beautiful. Him and Kevin Sullivan. Uh, I'm uh, friends with them to, to this day. Fantastic. Unbelievable talent. All right, we're gonna jump ahead. We can go on and on. I know. About that, Florida, I just wanted to get you know some of that old so school. Let me, uh, let me finish the little thing. So I did Florida Championship Wrestling for until they folded up, until cable started going up. Then Dusty went to Channel Seventeen, the Superstation. It wasn't TBS, right? It was channels, and uh, he took me up there. So I had a nice run in Florida. Went to WCW, had a fantastic run there. Then I ended up at WWF with Giant Gonzalez. I was well, his well, personal well, assistant for three years. Let's Tallest look. athlete on the planet at that time. Let's go back, though, to Florida Championship Wrestling. Okay. Why did they close the door? Is it because Wyndham and Rotundo leave? Is that what causes No, because issue? everybody left. And because uh, times were changing. And the uh, Cable and Vince, and, uh, it was just expanding. So there was all the small territories were shutting up. And it was just, just couldn't keep evolution. It, it was time. You know, not time, but... You know, it, evolution was changing. All right. It was changing. Changing. The All right. So wrestling changed. we're going to jump ahead. All right. You're Danny. a referee for a really important match and a cage match between Lugo oh, and Brody. Oh, yeah. What went on there? It was a bad booking from the beginning. I was there. Uh, Bro, Bruiser Brody, a big talent. Uh, and he was kind of feisty. The promoters thought, you know, he, he was a little... Uh, unpredictable sometimes but he was okay to work with you know he was just Bruiser Brody and Luger was just breaking into business but he'd been a pro athlete he played football he was a, had a beautiful body and um, they trained him in Florida Florida Championship Wrestling trained him and so they were handpicking his opponents they had big plans for him and then he did well uh, not the greatest worker in the business but his body and a good attitude. So anyway, he was young, green in the business, and they put him with Brody, and they didn't really talk about the match too much. It was bad. It was the the officer's fault for not getting Brody and, and talking to Luger, saying, hey, let's try to do this, let's try to do that. And and uh, Brody uh, um, didn't respect Luger because it, I don't want to say that. Luger didn't know how to handle the situation. He couldn't adapt to it. And he just kind of freaked out, and things happened. And, and, you know, it was a bad booking. You know, again, I don't know, but what they say out there is Brody was known to go through territories and actually try to ruin some territories with some of the things he was doing. Well, I don't know about that. He was just, maybe that's true, but I, I didn't see it. Uh, he was just well, you're uh, in this match. a renegade. He was a rebel, and he was independent, you know, and he'd demand money, and he wanted it his way. If that's trying to ruin territories, th okay. that's what it is. But I don't think so. A lot of guys were like that, like the Sheik and the different guys. They were all the same. Abdul the Butcher were, you know, demanding. and But they would come in and come for a week and then spin and go to the next door, and the houses would jump. So, yeah. you know, it was both a good side, uh, good for both sides. Luger. Did he not respect the business? No, he did. He did. Uh, he respected the business. He made a very good living. He was making uh, big money uh, working for Turner and Vince. Um, he did. Okay. That's fine. I want to go into, you were speaking earlier. And I like Lex. That's great. He seems, uh, you know. The rumors I heard were that basically Luger like didn't really enjoy the business, enjoyed the money, didn't enjoy the business, but sooner hey, or later he kind of... The business is brutal. A lot of guys it, find it hard because, look, there is no season. We are 300 and something days a year. Uh, pro football, they're seasonal. Basketball seasonal. Baseball seasonal. Soccer seasonal. We are 24-7 on the road. So the road is actually brutal. I'm going to give you a quick quick schedule. Mm -hmm. I did Monday Night Raw and Poughkeepsie. I did the second Monday Night Raw. When they were taping. When they, I was on the first Monday Night Raw. Yes, you were. So they were live one Monday Night Raw, and then taped the, the Tuesday and Wednesday for the following two Mondays. Uh, so well, so anyway, I did those three shows in New York area. The Thursday morning flew to San Diego, did the San Diego, drove up to L.A., caught a flight to Honolulu, worked the show, was there 12 hours, and 
flew to um, San Francisco to do Candlestick Park. And that's a wow. schedule. And that they go crazy. home. Yeah. You know? Uh, so it, it's really rude. Guys find it hard to adapt. Either you don't or you do. The, the road burns guys out. But the money's so good, it makes it bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, the sure. money's really good. These guys are making big it's like six I'm making figures. Big time. Well, so uh, Evan Ginsberg, uh, you ever see the movie The Wrestler? Yes. Okay, he's the associate With producer. Mickey Rourke? That's correct. Yeah. He's associate producer Pretty for The Wrestler. Pretty true movie. Kind of, kind of, you know what I mean? One of the greatest movies of all time. I like it. In my it. opinion. He's also associate producer for 350 Days. He used to have a show in the station. Evan is a huge proponent for uh, wrestlers having pensions and being taken that care of. That would be great. But the theory is about that is Vince McMahon, uh, all these big companies when they were territories, they pay you well enough to support your own pension. So, but, and I agree, now it's like the NFL and the NBA and all these big sports, they have the, why can't we have it too? Because it's a multi-billion dollar industry. It'd be nice, but I think their theory is they pay us well enough to get our own. And what do you think? I think it could go either way. I made great money. I have, uh, um, doing well my house is paid for uh i got a little cash and and uh it's been good to me so i did well with my money and a lot of guys do some guys mishandle their money look now vince has uh financial advisors uh uh personal you know he has all these advisors that teach these young kids who are making two or three hundred or four or five hundred thousand a year how to invest how to save money yeah. back then in the day they didn't so a lot of guys fell made millions and fell by the wayside because there was mismanagement you're a big superstar you never know what but, could so do you, get think, hurt do you and, think the wwe and vince have a responsibility to take care of like we all know kamala is not in great shape the, vince is it his responsibility does. vince does take care of his people look he has a wellness program. If you get hurt, they're gonna get you right. They have a wellness program. So again, you gotta be your own, your, you're making enough money to be responsible for yourself. Uh, Vince is not a, I'm not saying Kamala's a charity case at all. That's, but Vince is not a charity case. He pays you good, so you're on your, but he does take care of the people. Vince spent fifty thousand dollars on me, and I hadn't been I hadn't worked for Vince in twenty years, mm -hmm. and I went to their wellness program. I had some problems, and and he helped me through it. And you know, and this been fifty is, grand. I haven't worked for him in twenty years. This is someone on the inside that you know these smarties out there saying this guy is ruthless or whatever else. He's taking care of the people who have taken care of him. This I can't say a bad the, word about go. Vince. If and you mishandle your money, that's your bad. Uh, but and at what you point know, do you owe anybody anything? I work, right? If I lose my job, is my company going to take care of me the rest of my life? No. Right? Right. This they'll is give life. you something. They'll try to do their best, but it's not their, it's you know. It's what it is, right? It has thousands of employees. And he employs a lot of people, which is great. Thank you, Vince McMahon. Uh, your relationship with Giant Gonzalez. I got hooked up. They brought, you, you know, Ted Turner. He owns the Hawks, the Braves, CNN, TV. He owns so much stuff, it's crazy. He's Mr. Atlanta. He's one of the richest guys on the planet. The top sure. 100, for sure. Probably. Absolutely. Yep. You know, I think. Um, so, uh, one of his scouts for the Hawks spotted Giant Gonzalez playing European basketball. So, they invited him to come play NBA. And they were to get him in good physical shape. So, they brought him over here. Got him a nutritionist, fucking a therapist, because his knees were a little bit big. He's a big guy. He was yeah, almost sure. eight foot tall. So yep. he had been playing European basketball for a minute. So he wasn't a 100%. So they tried to get him into 100% so he can play NBA. But he could only play 60% for 15 minutes or, you know. So he said, oh, don't. They said, don't worry. We own the Hawks. We also have this thing called WCW. Giant Gonzalez said, what the hell is the WCW? Oh, it's just wrestling. What's wrestling? He didn't know anything about it. Don't worry, we're training you. They're going to pay him. They, they trained him for a year, put him up in uh, um, in Peachtree at the fucking Marriott. Can I cuss on this thing? You can say whatever okay, you want. Okay, Daddy, I normally don't cuss in case my grandson's watching. You know, Daddy? But uh, they put him up the fucking Marriott and uh, for a year trained him. And and so he was ready for. He wasn't a great worker, but he was one of God's gifts. Sure. Eight for a tall, and they he needed a personal assistant to drive him around and help him. And they asked me. I said, "Of course." 
and they paid me a little extra, which they didn't have to because we became good friends fast. And the perks that I got for being his personal assistant, we would sit, we, they would ask us, hey, Fonzie, take the Giant to the Braves game. You can sit in Ted Turner's box seats where him and Jimmy Carter sits. So the camera would pan over and say, oh, at the Braves game, even the Giant Gonzalez comes out and watches the Braves. And who's that? It's, they wouldn't say, that's Fonzie, but, you know, they, <laughs> they would, you know, but we would do, movie, I was being movies and, and uh, Baywatch and so many different things. It was very cool, so I was real fortunate. Uh, so that's how I got that thing that Dusty just asked me because I was Dusty's guy from Florida so I was like his left hand guy I was his top referee and whatever right so now WCW goes through a change and they're going to let Giant Gonzalez go no they, they were going through a change a guy named Jim Hurd he was uh, like a CEO of the Pizza Hut Corporation he was uh, were you a big fan of his no seems like nobody was um I didn't know what, but he came in and he's my new boss. And he said, Giant Gonzalez, Fonzie, I'm giving pay cuts to everybody. We're, so, say, I don't know if this is exact figures, but say the first year, Giant Gonzalez is going to make 300, the next year, 400, the next year, 500. Right. You know, three year deal. So, Jim Hurd wanted to shave a little bit of those uh, new years off and keep them low. Not low, but big money, but right. not under the contract. And uh, he was doing that to a lot of guys. And Giant Gonzalez said, Fonzie, I don't like that. I said, me either. But we don't have a big choice. He says, don't you know anybody in WWF? I said, yes. And he said, we can go to Japan and wrestle in Japan for 20 weeks a year and make big money. Or I can go back and play our, uh, European basketball. Uh, but if you know somebody in WWF, and I knew J.J. Dillon. At the time, J.J. was Vince McMahon's assistant, like the assistant booker. I said, I know J.J. So I hadn't seen JJ in a while because I'm in WCW for three years, right. and um, so I called the Titan Towers and Pris whoever Priscilla, the uh, event coordinator, or no talent co coordinator, answered the phone and said, "Hey, this is Fonzie, Bill Alfonso, can I speak with JJ?" And I was very surprised to get right through because you know that's like calling Vince almost. Yeah. Uh, so Jay, hey Fonzie, how you doing? We bullshitted for a minute, and then I told him what was going on. I said, hey, J the new guys in Jim Hurd, he wants us to take a pay cut, and the Giant and I want to see what our options are, if there's any, with you and with Vince. He said, well, let me run it by Vince. Uh, Fonzie's so good to talk to you. We know who you are. Uh, the Giant Gonzalez, uh, let me run it by Vince, and we'll see what he says. I'll give you a call if he's interested. So okay, we hung up, and I was at my parents' home, I had the giant because he had a little bone spur. Uh, so he had a little operation. We were off for 10 days just for that little thing. And all oh, my neighbors love me. They look over this giant Gonzalez in my golf buggy, my mom's <laughs> golf buggy. You know, people would say, wow, Fonzie's crazy. He's got all these characters coming over. Uh, so JJ calls us back in about 20 minutes. He says, Fonzie, Vince is very interested. I said, you know we're a package deal, kind of, but if you take him, that's okay, but we're kind of a package. I tell him his handler, not his handler, his personal assistant. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, oh, we know Fonzie. He said, when can you guys come up? I said, at your convenience. We're at my parents' house in Florida on the lake enjoying healing up. He says, can you guys come up tomorrow? I said, of course we can. Giant, is that okay? Yeah. He said, yes. So I said, JJ, the Giant's got to fly first class because he's eight foot tall and I can go cold. Don't worry. So the, he says, okay, I'm going to have the agent call you. So they hung up, the agent calls, two first class tickets. We fly up, Limo picks us up. We don't go to Titan Towers. We go to Vince McMahon's house. Wow. Which was very cool. Beautiful uh, in Greenwich. Were you marking out right there? Yeah, of course I was. And I had never met Vince. I'm a Southern WCW yeah, sure, and sure. Sort of wrestling. And, you know, he's Madison Square and all that. So Vince walks. So we go to Vince's house, and he's not there. Get JJ meets us at the front door. Come on in. We bullshit for a half hour. In walks Vince in a you know thousand dollar suit with his uh, uh, Nikes on, and he puts us over. Oh, I, I'm Giant Gonzalez. So he, I says, Oh, I know you too. You're very athletic. I know who you are. I said, Thank you, Vince. And at the end of the day, we signed a deal with him. And Giant Gonzalez tells Vince, Hey, I want to. I haven't been home in three years for Christmas. This was like in November when we were doing a deal. He says, you think I can go home? Uh, oh, for first, uh, uh, Giant told Vince, I was there, so this is a true story. Giant told Vince, hey, I still, uh, WCW still owes me $60,000. I want to go back and get that and finish up there. Vince says, don't go back. JJ, write him a $60,000 bonus, signing bonus. Boom. And then Giant says, 
I've been home for three years. Can I start in January, maybe? And Vince says, oh, of course, because it's time to get your gimmick and thing but, and all but, that. Wait a minute. So while he's asking this, though, it's your first time meeting Vince, right? Yes. And then are I'm you in his like, house. Aren't you like shaking to... your head like, shut up. What are you doing? You're uh, going for too much. No. no, no, no. It was all natural flowing. And Vince was so accommodating. Wow. And it was true. He needed time to create a new thing. Sure. You know, because I called him. I called J.J. Dillon like on, uh, on uh, November 1st. We were... We were in Vince's house November 3rd. Wow. We were signing contracts November 3rd. Wow. So, you know, it was a so fast when, when, they, when they throw this gimmick on him, are you like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, Vince had all the writers. He had the staff. He knew what his market was. He knew the giant wasn't a, uh, you know, a classic worker. He's right. eight foot tall. So he wanted to get the best out of it. He wanted to make an attraction. He did. It was okay. Yeah. But he, he could have went with Giant Gonzalez or, or whatever. You know, yeah, George, whatever. El Gigante, whatever. But Vince chose that. And it worked out. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was okay. So move a little forward. You know, it all ends. Giant goes home. Was yeah, he the always, Giant was having a little health right. problems. He was, was, no, was, was he always a diabetic, or was no, it? no, no? It came and it's uh, four years he was in the states here. Okay, you know the Giants don't live long. Right, they get the Giants disease, and he told me many times, Fonzie, you know I'm going to die young. Andre died at 43. Yeah, and, uh, how was his English? Perfect after a minute. Wow. You know what I mean? Perfect. And he was really well proportioned. Like he was, didn't have the giant disease yet where he had the, the disease, but he didn't have it where his forehead right. was growing, his jaw was protruding. You yeah, see sure. the, uh, So he was well proportioned. And the women loved him. And that was good for me. <laughs> well, the women adored him. And I'm not talking about wrestling fan women. Those yeah. women. But we'd go to a mall, and these women would follow us around. And, I mean, beautiful women. He was selective, too. But he attracted beautiful women. All right, so you, you're going into it. Tell me a story. You guys had a bar one night together. Someone comes up to him. What goes on? Oh, man. And then are you in the same room together? No, we never split the room, but I was I was the room right next to him because he would call me at three in the morning, would check in, we like the Marriott, they were comfortable for him, and they would accommodate him, bring him a little thing on the end of his bed because his feet would hang over. Right. Uh, they were really cool. And so he'd call me numerous times during the night, uh, you know, many nights, hey, Fonzie, I'm a little hungry, or I can't sleep, you want to play some cards, it's three o'clock, the they paid me good money, plus he was one of my best friends, I'm with him three years, so we became super friends, so, you know, we kind of had the same uh, schedule, so, you know, we had our habits were the same, and we called me, so one night he calls me, if my grandson's listening, you know, this is adult Maybe entertainment. We should, yeah, we need to turn, uh, the grandson needs to turn uh, it off John Avery, bit. don't watch this. Well, it's not bad. It's, you're growing up. You're not Yeah, years but you old, know what? It, it might young. get a little bad after this. Go ahead. No, but I, I'll, I'll make it uh, uh, presentable. Keep it on. For, so, um, here's what happened. After numerous times, three years, he's called me 500 times to go get him a hamburger or <laughs> play this or, you know, watch something on TV at 3 in the morning. So he called, my phone rings, we're dead asleep, we're, in, I don't know where we're at, Los Angeles, whatever. So the phone rings, hey Fonzie, can you come to my room? I said, okay. So I'm expecting him to say, Fonzie, go get me two hamburgers, go get me a chicken sandwich, five chicken breasts, a dozen eggs, scramble, whatever. So I'm not going to do it, he opens the door. I said, John, what are you doing naked? You're standing there naked. You know, big guy. He opens the door, and there is a one of the most beautiful blondes I've ever seen. 120 wow. pounds, beautiful, naked in the bed. I said, wow. So I said, come on in, Fonzie. She was just beautiful. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So I walk in, and he said, Fonzie, I got a problem. I said, what, John? You want me to go get you some kind of whatever? What do you need? He said, well, he said, the girth on me is too fat to get inside the girl. He said, wow. can you do her for a few minutes and loosen her up? Oh my and God. And then uh, you leave as soon as you loosen her up and then I take over. Now that is a well, that's a pretty good job, right? That's I'm getting paid six figures to bang a beautiful blonde did he let you for finish? my best friend. Did he let you finish though? Before? No. Oh, so no. you're just warming her up. I'm just warming up a little bit. That's kind of a crazy that's story. That's like the craziest true. story I've ever my heard. God, I'm embarrassed to say that. You know what I mean? But you know, it's what happens. Is he watching though? Like, He's okay, right there. Okay, I'm taking you out now, Bill. I think you did Pretty it. much. And the girl was so accommodating to me. Oh, don't worry, Fonzie. She was very <laughs> cool. It wasn't like she was anti-me. Yeah, she, no, I get Oh, come on. Yeah, boom. She's beautiful. 
No, that was his girlfriend oh. for you know for for a minute. But wow, uh, it was a cool job, right? Oh my god, that's, that's a crazy story. Shit, kind of right? No, it's not kind of. Is that not normal? It's probably not normal, but oh. it's. I wish it was normal. Wow, <laughs> that's a so. I I don't know. I'm lost for words right now. So that was my job description. Wow. For that one night. Fluffer. That didn't happen all the time, but it did Fluff. happen. You were fluffer. I was more of a go get him his food or wow. get the airline tickets or pick him up or go do a movie with him or go do something or get him his suit or call up with the guy oh and get him his shoes. And How about his passing? How did that affect you? I hadn't seen him for years uh, because he retired and went to Argentina in, the, you know, 94. And... Uh, it was still hit me hard. There's only, uh, we've lost a lot of guys. Yeah, lost like sixty-eight guys, uh, accidental overdose, uh, heart attack, suicide, car accident. It's terrible. The rest of the industry is small, so, um, so Dusty Rhodes hit me hard because he was like a father figure. I asked Dusty to be. I said, Dusty, I wish you were my father. Mm. My father had passed away. He said, I am, son. Wow. It was great. I love Dusty. So he affected me a lot. Jang Gonzalez, because I was so close to him, and a few different guys. You know, if you're working with him immediately, of course it affects you. But I hadn't seen Dusty in a minute. Uh, it affected me big. I hadn't seen Jang Gonzalez in a few years. It affected me big. We spoke occasionally, you know. Uh, but, you know, out of sight, out of touch. You know, that yeah, sure. thing like that, kind of. But you still remain friends. I can... Not see you for five years, and if I see you, hey, we had we clicked that yeah. day, so yep. we picked up where we left off. Gotcha. It, it affected me. It affected me. He was one. Of, we lost one of God's gifts, like Andre was a God's gift. You know the special gifts, uh, and, and Jack Gonzalez. Man, it was great to be around the largest athlete on the planet. It was cool. And at you, that time, and you supplied him. Think about what you did for him too. That you supplied him with a friendship. That, it was like you know, know that Bible story where the or the story, the myth where the little mouse takes the splinter out of the mm -hmm. big lion's claw. Yeah, sure. I did that, and we became we fell in love with each other, and we went around the world, made a little bit of money, and went around the world and did some unique things, and we formed a great friendship. I love it. I love it. I was it. very close to him. He didn't like anybody riding with us. If there was an emergency, somebody wanted to jump in, okay. But it was just me and him. So a little bit of man jealousy going on, right? No, he just didn't like people to be around him. We had created our own personal yeah, uh, travel your system. Own world, right? And uh, Ted Turner supplied us with a brand new Cadillac from Avis every day for 365 days a year. Now, was there any for point? Three years. Was there any point you felt like saying, "Go get your own fucking hamburger"? Though? Never, <laughs> never. Not once. No. Nope. Wow, good for you, man. No, nope, I enjoyed my job. Man, I want a, I want a friend. I keep saying this. This sucks. Hey, it's a job description. If it's, if they're paying me uh, six figures, and they tell me, Fonzie, go sweep that over there. I'm sweeping okay. it. Okay, they don't ask you that, but I, w I would. I would, There's too. a reason. We wouldn't. All right, we're going to jump to ECW. I know you get out of the WWE, take a break. You go in Florida. You're hanging out a little bit. Boom, phone rings. and So at the end of my WWF career, and I'm still affili affiliated with them. Yep. I work with their wellness program a little bit. Uh, so Giant Gonzalez had left because it was, you know, injuries. He was yep. tired. He was too big. And so he went home, and they kept me as a referee. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful and, and, uh, and uh, fortunate. So they kept me. And about a year goes by, I do the WrestleMania, do all that stuff. So as time goes by, wrestling declined a little bit. Their their revenue declined a little bit. So they were tightening the belt. So they didn't have the water cooler. They, they said they had to get rid of some talent a little bit, save their budget. So they said uh, some one of the agents come up to me. Not one of the agents, some guy mm -hmm. came up to me and said, Fonzie, unfortunately, this is what happened. You know, save the budget, and you were one of the last referees. Uh, we hired, so you don't have a job. Wow. Kind of cut and dry like that. So I was upset. Uh, one day I'm making good money, having a job, loving life, and I get that news. So By the way, what, is, what does a ref get for a WrestleMania shot? I made ten grand. That's not work one match. Holy shit! Nice. All expenses paid. Can't beat it. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Oh. Right, so, go back. so the guy, so I was upset. This didn't come from Vince. It came from one of you know underneath Vince, one of underneath the office, uh, way underneath. Uh, the guy's name was Steve, and um, I went up to Vince. We were doing TV. 
I said, Vince, you know, I just got word. No notice. It was really bad the way he said it to me. He said, what, Fonzie? You kidding me. The guy got a lot of trouble for presenting my departure like right. that. It wasn't cool. And Vince says, Fonzie, I'm going to take care of you. And when business packs back up, we're going to hire you back. When we come to Florida, you're going to work every Florida show. And in fact, uh, he gave me a beautiful severance package. Beautiful. So I was not, so that made me feel good. And, you know. So I went home. I went home and uh, was enjoying life. Now, this is my first time off in, since 1980s, mm -hmm. and this is 95 or whatever it was, 94. And I went home. I said, damn, what do I do with myself? I got money. The house is paid for. Everything is Gucci. And uh, I said, okay, so a month or two go by, and I'm still on TV from, you know, the tape and all that. So Paul Heyman is my dear friend. I helped him in Florida. Uh, we worked together in Florida in his early part of his career. Then we worked together in WCW, uh, and we became friends. So I get this phone call from Paulie. I haven't heard from Paul Heyman in a long time. Hey, Fonz. Hey, Paul Heyman. How you doing? We're bullshitting on the phone. He says, look, I got this company. It's called ECW. I said, what the fuck's an ECW? Because I had only worked mainstream for yeah. all the big companies. He said, it was this indie company. We're in Philly. We're doing this. He said, I got this little four-week program for you. I know uh, we'd love to have you. We'll take care of you. We'll fly you up and all that. I said, okay, no matter what happens, it's my friend and I'm, you know, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I fly up and we do this um, uh, sports entertainment referee, just fresh off of WWF. I was anti-violence, commission from all this gimmick. And I wanted to stop the ECW violence because they were hardcore right. tables and flames and sure. women going through tables and thumbtacks and mm -hmm. chairs. Oh my, it was crazy. So I got a lot of heat from the fans. I was stopped like a, they were waiting for a Taipei death match where they put tape on, dip their hands in gloves, in, then in glass. And then they would have a match. And there were juice all over the place. So these people, the fans had been, the smart marks in ECW were waiting for this match. So I was a referee. So a little trickle of blood, I stopped the match. Due to the lack of vision and the bonus <laughs> eye, I'm stopping the match. The people wanted to fucking hang me because I'm taking their entertainment away. Yeah, sure, sure. So I got natural heat. So, and uh, I was supposed to get choke slam at the end of the four weeks and go home. But Paul Heyman seen something and kept me and kept me and then put me with Taz and then uh, Evolution. I was there five years managing the three top guys and had a vet. I was fortunate enough to have a great position in ECW. So that's did, why I'm sitting here did, today. Well, did you take that gimmick from uh, Tolis, John Tolis, and his no, coach gimmick? No, no. Did you, Paul did Heyman you, gave me the whistle. So, did, uh, so no, did you feel all. like conflict of interest at all? Not at all, Daddy. I'm a different whistleblower. I'm a different Fonzie. I was a totally different character. I'm kind of unique in my own way because Paul Heyman said, Fonzie, just be. Uh, um, Monty, can you tell I'm a little hyper? I don't do any drugs. Can you imagine me on coffee and speed no. and cocaine or something? I'm actually <laughs> hyper, Daddy. That's so Paul Hamer says, just extend your hyperness a little bit, and we got a character. Okay. I talk fast. I do these crazy interviews, and it, it was just meant to be. But you had to be there, right place at the right time. If you try to force me in, if Vince called me today and says, finally, you want to try this same gimmick, and it doesn't get over, it's because the time's different. Yeah, it's a different time. You know, yeah. you had to be there to really... Like I beat Bueller last. We had a, me and Bueller had yes. a match. Yep. It's a 22 year anniversary, like this year or so, this month or something. Uh, we you had to be there. And they're still talking about the match Absolutely. today because I bled to death. You see that big Bueller's box? Yeah. Go that way it looks like Bueller's snatch. Nice. There, so there you go. go. That way it looks like a big. Um, so my my point is you had to be there. And I don't think we can make Lightning hit twice. If they, Vince brought me in, that'd be totally something different. I don't know. It seemed like you still got it. Maybe. It but, might work. Yeah. Listen, I would think so, but you know. Scorpio was in here, Shane Douglas, boys, the gangsters. I want you to hey, weigh in on Chris Candido and your thoughts on Candido. Oh, my God. What an unfortunate thing that happened. My God. God bless him. He was so talented. He was one of the top, you know, 20 workers in the business. He was very good. Unfortunate what happened to him, man. Uh, big loss to the wrestling family, Chris Candido. Beautiful guy, good-looking kid, can work his ass off. Damn it. All right, but you're in the locker room. Yes. Okay. Candido's with Sonny. Yeah, Sonny oh. was one of the most beautiful girls ever. Absolutely. And what a uh, personality she had with the mind. She was good and beautiful. Absolutely. God bless her. Beautiful. Yes. But 
the boys are kind of having their way with him, with her, right? And you're back there. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So, you, you know, everybody talks about what a great guy Candido was, and then here's Sonny doing him wrong. Or What, what was your way in on that? I don't know. This, you know, the wrestling industry is crazy. She's a woman. She, you know what I mean? Things happen. I don't know. But, you know, but... Um, I'm I mean, just the, the, I, I felt like it's public knowledge that you know she liked, you know, to uh, she liked to hang out, but you know. Okay. I, I'm on the good side. I like everything Gucci. No, you know no, I, mean, I, I, I get it. All my my own, my only point is everybody always says such wonderful things about Candido, and even when he was in the WWE and ECW, it seemed like she was just really. We just can say doing one, dirty, yeah. You we know? can say wonderful things about Sunny too, but unfortunately, she's human, and you know she makes some bad yeah, but, choices. You know, and you, things you, happen, you managed but, you you actually managed Sabu. Yes. Right, and when I talk managed, you managed him. You managed his money. You managed everything for him, right? I didn't actually manage his money. It was more of a showbiz, a TV deal. Were you we we travel together when I was traveling. Were you, were you with close ben. with him? Yeah, absolutely. Wasn't he one of the guys? bagging Sonny at the time? I don't know. I can't comment on that because I don't know. He might have, you know. I wish I would have. She's beautiful, but not when she was with Chris, but, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it could it could have happened. I didn't see it, but... Okay. You managed Taz. How was Taz as a person? Taz was pretty cool. He was really into the business. He loved the business. He wanted to get over. He Taz was... Uh, Taz and I became stars together. So Taz had like three gimmicks. He was Monkey Boy, Taz Man, whatever the fuck he was. Right. All these gimmicks didn't really get over to a certain extent. Now, when they created Taz, the character we all know and love, and was badass, had the big fucking thighs and stuff. Uh, when they, when he, he was a spinoff of himself. He didn't. People do better when they portray themselves. And maybe a little hype it up a little bit, and then he got over. They put me with him, and we both got over. We both grew, and then they put me with Sabu and Van Dam, which was really cool. Uh, but Taz is pretty laid back. We didn't travel together too much, uh, but when we were in the building, we did our stuff. We were really good together, and and uh, he was a laid back guy. He was more of a type of guy who didn't. We stayed at the Marriott. We'd go down to the bar and have a cocktail. He went up to his room and had milk and whatever. He was, he was straight, right? Pretty straight laced guy, married, uh, really get up in the morning, train. We all train, got up in the morning, but some of us like to party a little bit and hang out. A little bit. Yeah, and well, he wasn't that tight, but he was really badass. Speaking of partying, you travel with Sabu and RVD. Oh, my God. How are you still alive at this point? Uh, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. Um, uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. Van D you know, Van Damme's a big advocate for 420. You know, you yeah. see the shirt I'm wearing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's the latest shirt, and it's RVD approved. It's a new shirt I just came out with. Angelica Mary Alfonso designed it, and, and we. It's a great shirt. I got one for you. Uh, oh, thank you. That's you great. And, and uh, Big Jim. Uh, nice. nice. So, um, wow. Hello. What were we talking about? Fuck. Traveling with RVD and Sabu. Oh yeah, it was great. They would smoke. RVD can light up a joint, and ECW is okay, but you can't do it with Vince. You light up a joint, and on the way to the ring, practically. Come on, Fonzie. They were making me take a copy, so they wouldn't think I would take one hit, so they wouldn't think I was a cop. You know oh, what really? I mean? Really? Yeah, it was a right, bullshit well, thing. Want, you, know you, I mean? you weren't a cop yesterday, but let's just check again. Take another hit for tonight's show. Yeah, that's great. How hard were the drugs, besides marijuana? Um. I say like in any other sport, any other profession, professional football, drugs up the ass, basketball, every sport, wrestling, no different. There were some guys that used, of course, uh, and we were kind of, uh, we were celebrities, so the drugs were easy for celebrities to get. A football player can get, we're very easy, so what, we were. What drug put you in rehab? All of them. Uh, wow. Wow. So alcohol. Give me a basic prescri prescription drugs because so, we'd get hurt. We'd yeah. go to the doctor. So my justification for doing narcotics and and, and pain pills and stuff, which uh, uh, I don't do anymore, been clean for six years. Mm -hmm. Besides a little pacololo, and that's very rare. Uh, so I justified it because the doctor gave it to me. The doctor were, oh, Fonzie, you hurt your back needs to turn. Right. Here, here, this will get you through. So they give us endless supplies, and, and it's very easy 
to, for the drugs to take advantage of you. I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a DJ, a producer, a, a, a wrestling fucking guru. It, it doesn't have it. Look, the mayor of Washington, D.C., drugs. Sure. Uh, football players, drugs, everybody. You know what I mean? No different. So, um, I, well, friends were dying and stuff, and I had enough, and, and Vince has a wellness program, which we spoke about, so he'd send me two letters a year. Fonzie, if anybody, you know, you need some help, he'll hook you up. Mm-hmm. And they did, so I called and went through uh, the wellness program, and here I am sitting with you nice and clean. Congratulations. I'm so clean I can uh, piss Zephyr Hill spring water, Daddy. Oh, nice. Oh, man, okay. So, Eric, you want to come on board here? Eric Sims from ESS. He's been a great host all weekend. Eric is uh, he is number one in the Northeast, man. You're lucky to have hooked up with him. It's a good deal. I like deal. Eric. We've been friends for years. No so fo- no Fozzie for 20 where years. Where are you guys heading after this? We're going to you know, The Wrestling where? Universe in Queens, New York. It's Jack's Store, 3429 Francis Lewis Boulevard, Flushing, Queens, New York. Fonzie's going to be there. Rosa Mendez is going to be there. I'm going uh, to. <laughs> what happened? Don't mind down. Going Re, uh, you're going to sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Renee, Renee, Michelle, Rebel, Adam Bomb's gonna be there. Uh, yeah, anybody listening to the broadcast, if you want to come down, we're gonna be there in the next uh, hour three, and twenty three, minutes. Some of there till two o'clock. Come on down, three please. O'clock. Come on down. They're signing autographs, doing a meet and greet. It's a, it's a New good York thing. was a big, big market for ECW, and I got a lot of friends. Please come down and hang out. I would love to see you. Excellent. Try it. Anything ESS that you want to know about, www.essspromotions.com. You know it's no BS with ESS. Business and success and in ESS. And, of course, that's sensational. So, Bill, b- before you go, you were, you were speaking to me about... What do you mean before I go? I can talk all night long, Daddy. Yeah, oh, no, we got to go. We got to go. We got to get to the sign. Stay and talk. Wait a second. We got to get to the sign. Part here. one, part two. I haven't even told you the story about Barry Windham getting shot. I haven't even told you the story about the alligator next time you come Roddy down. Piper. I haven't told you about the story about Dusty Rhodes. Damn, I'm telling you for the next time you come That's why we call for round two. That's for round two. That's for round two, Daddy. But you were speaking about my... Barry Windham shot. That's your boy. That is my boy. Roddy Piper was my boy too. Him and shooting an alligator. Oh my god. Alright, no, I gotta get you out of here. Oh, you almost had. Yeah, so you were, you were talking about <laughs> Urban Inc. and my former partner Jimmy Reese, so you wanted to give him a shout out? Oh yeah, which is uh yeah, of course. Hey, where are you, Daddy? We missed you, man. I heard you was a shit, so you know, uh if you got time, come down to the autograph session and I'll hook you up with a t shirt and uh, and a picture. Nice. I love to. You're a big fan of pro wrestling, and you, you know who Bill Alfonso is. You're my boy, Daddy. Hey. So, so, hey, if you get, so Jimmy Reese, if you get down here in the next five minutes, we'll take care of you. All right, right. right? <laughs> well, you said come down to the studio. We're here for five more minutes. So if, you, if he's there in five minutes, we'll take care of him. But anyway, you, you told how much you loved Urban Inc. and his talent stuff. You asked him where he was and stuff. So I thought you'd give him a nice shout out. I appreciate that. Yeah, sir. Thank you for coming on board. Hey, thank you to uh, uh, the producer, all you guys. Uh, a lot of superstars came through here and they're coming through here again so uh the number one uh wrestling broadcast in long island daddy it's where to listen to i listen to it every time they broadcast never miss it daddy bill alfonso says so oh go to my social media bill fonzie alfonso i get it all everything twitter facebook everything and uh, i'm doing a lot of appearances big ones coming up all over the country and i would love to see all you wrestling fans and if you say you listen to me on this show i'll hook you up nice real quick before and send the bill to you guys before, <laughs> real quick before you go how many ring rats have you nailed in one night well, I attract, uh, I don't know why, but the big bone heavy set blondes love me, Daddy. Sometimes I love them, too. Oh, man. Anyway, this has been Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast for Eric Sim, Jim Savali, and none other than Bill Alfonso. Thank you again, sir. Catch us Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. only here at Village Connection Radio. Again, go to www.montyandthefaro.com. See us on YouTube and on www.villageconnectionradio.com. Thanks, Daddy.